tuned in to the J-Dog and Levis Show. After years of playing together in bands and tons of late-night conversations, it was decided that it was only fair we repeat it all here. Podcast number 12. J-Dog and Levis show. Tonight, we're going to talk about Lee's trip up north. I'm not going to talk about it. You talk about it. I'm bitter. No. You're going to talk about it. Fine. It's your damn trip. We're also going to talk about a computer payment that J-Dog took this week. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we have to to give our condolences to the Prince family. Yes. In a way that we only know how. (laughs) I hope that involves a dramatic reading. Some dramatic poetry tonight. Good. You will hear. Good. He would appreciate that. And uh, we're also going to be talking about the biggest fans we've ever had, whether it be J Dog and Levis or Cavern Hill Liars. Wait. Some of the biggest fans. We've had fans? I'll tell you about it. Oh, great. I'm looking forward to it. I hope I get one. And we might even touch on that subject about this whole thing with money and the faces. Face money. Face money. Hmm. Yeah. $20 bills, $10 bills. Okay. Stuff that we generally don't see rolling in from this show. <laughs> All that and more tonight. Podcast number 12. Coming at you, J Dog and Levis. Woohoo! Bloop! Take two. Or three. Or nine. Hopefully, we don't get to nine. Searching for that someone that's me out on the prowl As you sit around feeling sorry for yourself So don't get lonely now And dry your whining eyes I'm just roaming for the moment Sleeves in my backyard Don't get so uptight thinking about ditching me No time to search the world all around Cause you know where I'll be found When I come around When I come around I've heard it all before So don't knock down my door I'm a loser and a user Don't need no accuser Try and slap me down because I know I'm right So go do what you like Make sure you do it wise You may find out your self-doubt means nothing was ever there Can't go forcing something if it's just not right No time to search the world all around Cause you know where I'll be found When I come around When I come around When I come around When I come around Leave us Levis. You know, it uh, came up the other day. I I was looking for stalker songs, and it turns out I had a couple. So um, <laughs> I'd like to thank Green Day for writing the best stalker lullaby in my repertoire. And it was very much a lullaby. Yeah, I kind of do it lullaby-ish. Can you sing that to me tonight before you leave? Absolutely. Yep. And leave the lights on? <laughs> yes, just in case. When I come around, that was high school. No. Wasn't it? I don't know. Way early 90s. Maybe not. I don't think Green Day was around when we were in high school. We were were still wearing hammer pants in high school. Then again, until I was 30, I was still hanging out at high school. (laughs) There is that. Maybe it wasn't high school for you. (laughs) Tough guy. That's right. 
I moved on to the community college. <laughs> Actually, I went to community college. Oh, you did, did you? Because I thought I had to. Oh, I thought okay. that was the thing. Well, it was for some of us. So I went and I, uh, I took speech. I, I don't remember seeing you there. Uh, it was a long speech class. <laughs> And I hung out at the what was the the hub of the uh, oh yeah the food yeah. court the, no it was called the I want to say the hub yeah. was it the hub I think so I spent a lot of time I spent a lot of time watching Days of Our Lives on the big screen in the lounge mm. area and, uh, yes picked that up yeah <laughs> and then it was funny because my wife was really into that show for a long time I don't think she watches it much anymore maybe she does I don't know but <laughs> when I met her she had been watching it for years. And when I had ripped off some of the characters, oh, she was quite amazed. Yes, and impressed. I know who John and uh, Elena, I think her name was, and, <laughs> and Sammy, and I, I knew all the characters. Yeah, you so, have a way with the ladies, J-Dog. Well, the point was, the only reason I watched it is because it was me and 17 women. <laughs> well, I can't blame you there. I mean, if you hang with the masses, you got a better chance. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just working the, work the numbers. Working the numbers. Oh, they were working the odds. Uh, Makes Makes sense to me. It does make sense. The hub. I think the specialty there was that they had a BLT. Oh, yeah? And I used to get it all the time mm-hmm. because how do you mess up a BLT? <laughs> I guess you could, but the hub always got it right. So, yeah, speech My, class. What else did I... I don't remember. What, yeah, it doesn't matter because I didn't get a degree. So that's about it, huh? I just speech. went there just because I was supposed to go there. <laughs> just took speech. And as you can tell by all of all of my corrections on this show that... Obviously, I didn't pass the class. Maybe you should have taken an English class in there, too. (laughs) Well, I did take uh, freshman English my senior year in high school. Oh, okay. Because I decided that freshman year was not the year to study. Well, yeah. You know, I I guess I got mixed up in the wrong crowd. Mm, mm -hmm. Uh, Chad Nelson. uh, (laughs) Oh, yeah, bad egg. Uh, Yeah, that was a bad egg. Uh, (laughs) Carl Ahrens, that was a bad egg. Chad Nelson. Yeah, got stuck there. And I, I think I have a great story about Chad Nelson. I, I have a few too, but I'm not gonna although I'm not gonna top yours if it's a good one. No, it, well I don't know. It's good and clean. So it, it's probably it, it's no running through the woods of South Elgin or anything. <laughs> well we're so, already here, so why don't you tell me about Chad Nelson? Okay. Of South Elgin. If Illinois. I remember correctly, Chad Nelson worked at Corn's Freeze, which has since uh used to be a a, a like a Dairy Queen kind of thing, and um, has changed names and stuff. The building was there up until just recently. I think they finally yeah. took that. Actually, we just noticed the other day, and there was a, a Dunkin' Donuts next to it that's gone as well. Oh, okay. So, you know, yeah, the it's, whole... it's serious when they got to take down Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Something went wrong. <laughs> and um, anyway, so I think he was working there, and there were three of us that came in, and first person ordered a chocolate shake. Okay. Second person ordered a chocolate malt, and I ordered a extra thick chocolate malt. Of course you did. So, um, you know, four minutes later, three large cups show up on the counter, and they say, your orders are up. And I walk up thinking I'm, like, super funny, and I'm like, so, which one's the extra chocolate malt? And Chad Nelson, without ever breaking eye contact, takes one of the cups and flips it upside down. Boonk! Okay. Right on the counter, and then just looks at me, and then walks away. And I'm like, "All right." He dropped the malt. I, yes, he did. <laughs> nice. Didn't say a word. And it, and it it cracks me up because if you go to Dairy Queen now and you get a Blizzard, they'll flip it over, but they flip it over for like an eighth of a second, right. just enough to show you that yeah, the spoon doesn't fall out. And you can tell it's because they were told they had to. Yes, because some of them aren't even excited about it. Right. <laughs> now, when we go to the Dairy Queen by where I work, and I know I said this before, I do have a day job, believe it or not. Whatever. Uh, I know you leave the house once a day, but other than that. <laughs> the manager is actually happy to flip it over. Oh. And he'll hold it there. And if you just hesitate, he'll just keep holding it. <laughs> if you don't reach out to get it, I see. he will just keep holding it and stare at you. Ah. A little bit of a smile, kind of like a Mona Lisa smile. <laughs> <laughs> but every other kid in there, if we go in there, it's that, it's that okay, I have to do this, here you go. Mm-hmm. That's an exciting thing. I think so. I mean, I it's it... just the whole defiance of gravity. <laughs> That's a yes. thick blizzard you at got least, there. Yeah, at least then you know that the uh, the milk ratio is pretty low. Because, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not going to stick other Either that or your uh, Snickers ratio is really high. You know, <laughs> and it's, all that caramel's keeping it in there. 
or the uh, the Butterfinger. That's the one that always sticks to the teeth. Maybe yes. that one actually sticks to the side. Could. <laughs> don't they have one uh, pickled pig's feet? What are you talking about? I got one of them when I was in Alabama on my way down, <laughs> my way down to Panama City. Got oh. a pickled pig's feet blizzard. Uh huh. <laughs> now I'm not joshing you now. <laughs> Suppose that's a regional favorite. <laughs> And not only is it, they put in the pink food coloring, and then there's a hoof sticking in it, kind of like oh, a like a French silk lovely. chunk of chocolate. Oh yeah, that's... <laughs> down there in Balabamba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Panama City, which is where we used to go. Uh, I, I can't really say I, I used to go to Florida, okay? Because that whole Panhandle thing in Florida, mm. wherever you are in the Panhandle, and you're below that state, you're in that state. I see. <laughs> Alabama is Alabama all the way to the coast. Gotcha. And uh, Mississippi, it's the same. It's, it's a, you're not in Florida. So it's kind of pseudo Florida. Florida, <laughs> I guess you could call it that. I, it's Florida. Well, from the water till about forty feet up on the beach <laughs> is Florida. <laughs> but once you get past that forty feet, you're in Alabama. I see. <laughs> and the natives will let you know. Gotcha. They'll let you know. Mm. Pickled pig's feet blizzard. Mm. See, I can never get past the uh, grits blizzard. Otherwise, I'd. <laughs> Try something new. And that one will stick for an hour and a half if you hold it upside down. <laughs> Get them grits. Stick to your ribs. Make a man out of you. <laughs> Just careful, though, because if you ever get the uh, the grits blizzard every once in a while, there's a couple curlies on top. <laughs> you got to be careful of those curlies. <laughs> yeah, this was a uh, this was an odd week. Yeah? An odd week. Um, last week's show at the Tavern Hill Liars was was actually pre-recorded. Mm, okay. So we missed a couple of current events that people were probably thinking, how how horrible are these guys? You know, right. talking about right. current events. Yes. That's... But uh, that was all Rufus's fault. Absolutely. He's only here for a certain amount of time, and we mm-hmm. had to capture him. So we did that. Like a Pokemon? Like a Pokemon. Mm-hmm. And I believe I said uh, in that show that we would announce the winner of the T-shirt contest. Okay. The then, following week, even though I had already announced it pretty much before that show even <laughs> posted, because we got a winner right away. So you probably saw it on the Facebook page, and if you didn't, uh, Terry, one of our very proud listeners, yes, she gave the answers, which you can actually go on the Facebook page and see I posted if them. I, if I remember correctly, she was very thorough about the answers, too. The <laughs> If she didn't go back and use a, what is that, the stenograph? <laughs> <laughs> As she was listening to get the notes, she she paused it a bunch of times and wrote it word for word. So she knew exactly where to go, where to hunt, where to find it. Mm-hmm. And she got all three answers and a t-shirt's coming her way. The only problem is when I emailed her to ask her for her address, she said that she was going to be out of town for a while. Okay. She's on vacation. So you sold her shirt to somebody else? So I sold my shirt yeah. to the guy down in Florida that made my pickles pick feet blizzard. <laughs> and he's probably wearing it today. So in Alabama, they are acoustically sound and sexy. Yes, absolutely. So I asked her to give me a quick email when she got back, and I would get her address and everything. And I haven't heard from her yet. Mm, maybe, you on, scared, maybe you scared her off. Going on two weeks here. Uh, mm. Must be nice. Hope you're okay, Terry. So yeah, there were uh, got that one answered right away. So that was very encouraging mm-hmm. that somebody actually pays that much attention to us. I'm, Outside of my family, that's hard to find. I, yeah, I was going to say, I'm glad somebody's got the time to do that. And I'm glad her name is Terry. Terry! Terry! <laughs> I think we should have another contest. Yes? Uh, not right now, but I'll, I'll, I'll think of something here. And with your input, we will come up with a way that somebody gets a song written about them. Ooh. That's the prize. Okay. So we can go back to our five taco special days. We'll get oh. Asian Mad in studio. Yep. And uh, perform that song live for the winner. That's a really good idea. And then also we can send them a uh, professionally recorded copy. Okay. Professionally recorded? Well, professionally recorded, not professionally performed. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't say that. Fair enough. So there's been plenty of professional recordings that have not been professionally (laughs) performed. (laughs) But one uh, professional performer that is no longer with us and Uh, we didn't get to talk about is Mr. Prince. Prince Rogers Nelson. Okay. Did you guys know he died? I I had heard rumors. I don't like to be the first one to burst news out. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you're, that, but you're still in mourning, so it's okay. I am still in mourning. I wasn't a diehard Prince fan. I I had the Purple Rain album. Okay. Uh, on vinyl. I think I had on vinyl. Really? And I said album. <laughs> <laughs> and I had some of the 45s of the hit singles. 
and he was on the radio all the time, and I'd sing along, and and it was just a part of my childhood. You you do kind of have his uh, his suave good looks. It's the eyes. It really is. So yeah, they the, they do sparkle. It's the deep eyes and the uh, the curly hair that comes down your forehead and the glitter on the back of my neck, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which I put there. <laughs> <laughs> but as I was reminiscing, because ab- you're sloppy, I am sloppy. <laughs> As I was reminiscing about Prince, I uh, in today's day and age, you can get lyrics whenever you want. You just pull out your phone, and there you go. You got lyrics. It's a beautiful thing. Back then, I wasn't really concerned about the lyrics. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to hear the song. The one song that I brought up was Little Red Corvette. I loved Little Red. That was the first song that I liked from him. Little Red Corvette. Uh, when it got to that chorus, and, and you had to do the clap. Mm. Little Red Corvette. Mm-hmm. And there was that third clap that I always put in that wasn't there. It's not? But everybody put that third delayed clap in. I had no but it's idea. it's not in the song that I found. Okay. So I decided to look at the lyrics of this song, just for the heck of it. Well, when I clicked on YouTube to play it, the lyrics are right underneath it. Sure. So I'm reading down. Uh, I'd like to read you one passage from it that okay. I had no idea existed yes, until read me. we lost Prince Rogers Nelson. Read me from uh, Prince 316. Let me... Uh, let me find a way to make this a little more interesting. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, yeah. It's a nice touch. Just had that playing there. Prince Rogers Nelson, ladies and gentlemen. So as that's playing in the background, let me just read the lyrics here. It says, I guess I must be dumb because you had a pocket full of horses. Trojan and some of them used. But it was Saturday night, and I guess that makes it all right. And you say, what have I got to lose? <laughs> now let's think about that. Okay. Why don't you break it down for me, j Dog? A pocket full of horses. Well, you kind of get that from the gin and juice song. Oh. I got a pocket full of rubbers, and my homeboy does too. Okay. Okay, everybody goes to a party with a pocket full of condoms. Oh. I, well. So you don't think they're like... I did in ninth grade. Mustangs? <laughs> no, it wasn't Mustangs. It wasn't oh. Mustangs. So, Palominos? So he, I'm confused on which kind of horses. <laughs> quarter horse. <laughs> <laughs> they were quarter horses. Uh, <laughs> stud horses. And then the Trojans, some of them use. Now, I don't know about everybody else. <laughs> but if I ever... I know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put it back in my pocket when I was done. <laughs> You didn't try if, and fit it back in the in the little package. Even if it was a trophy night, <laughs> and 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 you set out and you set your targets on that one target, and and you nailed it, and you got it, <laughs> you nailed it. I all didn't right. put it. I didn't keep it as a trophy. What is this <laughs> Trojan and some of them used line? <laughs> it kind of disturbed me. I'm still a Prince fan, but it put a dent in it. That's that's kind of gross. And then it goes on to say... See, then you'd have to figure it out in the dark, too. You'd, have, you'd be fumbling around trying to figure out which ones are new, which well, ones are used. Did he just shove it in there? Did he tie a knot first? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you have some Ziplocs? What'd you, how did you do that, Prince? And, and then he goes on to say, but it was Saturday night. I guess it makes it all right. Oh. So if he got laid on a Tuesday, <laughs> that condom's not good enough? Maybe, that one went in the trash. Maybe that's the, uh, maybe that's the used one. <laughs> Saves it for... In case Saturday night goes, gets really wild. Because <laughs> yeah, what if you run out of fresh ones? <laughs> and then, uh, and you say, what have I got to lose? And I say, little red Corvette. Okay, well, it, it just bothered me a little bit hmm. that he would put that in there. But when you get to the end of the song... Okay. Uh, he, Surely he, he there's likes, a happy ending at the end of this. <laughs> there's always a happy ending when it comes to Prince. <laughs> uh, he goes back to the horse theory story okay. again yeah. motif and he says i guess i should have closed my eyes when you drove me to the place where your horses run free all right so now we're just not using them at all anymore okay mm-hmm. so before we were using good ones bad ones whatever we could get our hands on now it's <laughs> screw it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i'm just i'm going out there bareback uh because i felt ill a little ill when I saw the pictures of the jockeys that were there before me. Oh, it's a tragedy. Now it's a tragedy. Oh. <laughs> this, Prince. This did not end well for Prince. <laughs> you set me up and broke my heart. <laughs> so, let's just say the man was a genius. 
Mm-hmm. He had the skills on 20 different instruments. Yes. Well accomplished. Yes. He was a musician, wrote several songs for other people that you're probably never even going to know that he wrote. Mm. Um, and he truly was a talent. The other thing I like about Prince, he never had a scandal about him. He was never in the news. Mm. Never did anything wrong. The only time you heard anything about him is he was donating money somewhere. Or he was doing something for the community. Mm. He, he grew up in Minnesota. He stayed in Minnesota. Yes. I mean, he was a very upstanding guy. Just kept it all private. Right. And yes. I respect that. Yeah, I had uh, I, I had heard that too. That he he was, you know, for being as flamboyant as he was, he was also very private about things. And uh, yep, depending on if you were trying to get any of that information, you know, it seemed like, well, why are you holding on to this? For instance, rumor has it that uh, I heard this before he died um, that he has a he he has a literal vault in his house with uh, recordings that he did not. Um, publish okay so uh what they were saying was that um like old recordings well of did like they say or like stuff he did in the 80s and he just never no published it was just all things that he did but didn't make albums for wow and uh and basically and again this was before his death they were saying that his his estate could put out a prince album every year for like the next 20 years oh, wow <laughs> and and not run out of material he just had tons of Tons and tons of stuff, and so. that's that's very interesting, because I also heard in the news that his sister said he didn't have a will. Oh, he never wrote a will. Maybe little red Corvette What's... was his will. Maybe we need to go over the lyrics again. <laughs> we probably should. But what's going to happen to those songs now? Yeah, yeah. whose hands are they going to fall into? Right. And are you are you going to sell them to? To Bieber? <laughs> Wait, if Bieber wants them and he gives you a couple million dollars, what are you going to do with those songs? Did uh, did you catch, they were saying on the on the radio that um, he uh, he topped the album charts this week in album sales. Bieber did? No. Oh, Prince did. Thank God. <laughs> so uh, Prince ch- topped that with, with two albums. So it was Purple Rain and it would have been, I don't remember what the other one was. People but, downloading on iTunes and, yes. and all that. Wow. Yeah. So he was a tart, the tart chopper. Chart topper. Tart chopper. Um, but the uh, the other interesting thing about this was apparently it was on the last day of the week when they, uh, when they record these things. So both of his album and, um, uh, and he died, since he died on the, on Thursday, Something like that. Anyway, they right. he died the day before they they do the the review. So basically, he blew out every other album this week within twenty four hours. Wow! And uh, so, although he wasn't around to enjoy that, but well, were you hanging around the internets or the Googles at the time that all the news was breaking? No, not really, because I happened to be in no. front of the computer at the time. Right, because I was out of town. That's correct. And, mm-hmm. and it started out for like the whole first hour was, is he dead? Yes. Because a, a 911 call had been placed. They couldn't say who it was. They couldn't mm. confirm it. And then everything just blew up. And then everybody said, oh, Prince is dead, but nobody knew for sure. Right. And then finally he was dead and it came out. And, and I imagine that's when the album sale started, when the official word came out. Probably. And I, I went through YouTube. And if you go into YouTube now, all the videos that come up, like, if you just do videos, because you can search and filter by time, mm, mm-hmm. time that it was released, if you just do, like, the last week, there's, like, 50,000 videos, because everybody's making a tribute. Sure. <laughs> so you can't even get... It, it's hard to even find that one Prince video that you want to watch. <laughs> because <laughs> through all the other... you got to get through all the other ones first. Yep. So... Makes sense. Yeah, but you weren't there for that, because you were out of town. That's true. I was, uh, I was heading towards the Great White North. The Great White North. Which, sort by of. the way, is where Prince is from. Oh, well, okay, yes. Not not that great white north, I guess. Well, you didn't quite go that far west. No, that's true. Okay. So, uh, Where'd you go? Um, had had the old uh, boys weekend once a year. Um, me and a, a couple guys that I don't get to see uh, very often, except for just about once a year. Oh, and Studio Marty, uh, he was there. Okay. Um, we head up to uh, Silver Cliff, Wisconsin. Silver Cliff. Yes, the mighty, industrious Silver Cliff, Wisconsin. Population? Uh, 
four when you're there. So yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> and a couple of squirrels. <laughs> so, um, and uh, just outside of Crivets, I'm sure you know where Crivets is. Oh, so if you'd have just said that, yeah, exactly. I wouldn't have so a Google half, Map up right now. Half an hour outside of Crivets. Um, Sounds like a disease. <laughs> oh man, I it's fun. To... It's fun to say. Scorching case of the Crivets. <laughs> it just. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. That might be a disease you get from used condoms. <laughs> it's actually on the it's on the underside of the Trojan horse. It's a disease that forms called the crivets. <laughs> Very nasty. It's real scaly. It's yeah. Oh well, and, and it's kind of funny because uh, it feels like they were. It's almost as if they were having a competition for the worst names up there you know or names that would make you giggle right because crivets obviously makes you giggle but um outside of uh silver cliff is another town that you have to drive through uh called athelstane <laughs> so uh yeah i was kind of hoping it was athelstany or and, something but and this, you, you and this was a guy's only <laughs> crivets and athelstane so uh anyway but does the, this rag smell like athelstane <laughs> But the, uh, so the draw, you may be wondering why we go up there, but uh, this is on the Peshtigo River, and there is some uh, whitewater rafting that white we do. Whitewater, ah. Yes. Never done it. So, yeah. Um, well, I hadn't either until um, I got coaxed into it. And, um, again, I have Studio Marty to thank me for that. Thank for that. Well, he's been uh, doing it for a while, right? Yeah, he had done it several years before okay. I got up there, and um, it was like, Leave us, you got to try this out. So, and um, part of it's the rafting. The other part of it is being in the middle of the no of the nowhere with, um, with a bar and a couple cabins, and so you really you know kind of get away from it. And for us uh, busy folk, it's kind of nice. So, um, play some guitars, um, sit around and and yak a lot. So and beautiful other. weather this last weekend. Yes, and unlike we had good weather today. Yeah, I think which it was is normally fifty what degrees it's like. warmer on Sunday. So uh, yeah, we picked a good weekend. Well, and we normally go two weeks earlier, and uh, because it's the opening weekend for the river, so we get the whole place to ourselves. Now, when they say opening weekend, yeah, is that just because the tour guides aren't working, or there's like river conditions that don't favor? There's still ice. Yeah, uh, two years ago they were. They were out there with chainsaws cutting the ice off oh, on Thursday so that maybe we could go on, on Friday. So I assume it has something to do with uh, tourist season and and when that starts. Okay. But I don't know. Um, so I am I am far from a river expert, being that I only go, you know, <laughs> once a year. So, but, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, the water was a balmy 42 degrees, nice. I believe found that out firsthand this year which in other years i had not not so. immediate life-threatening no no but enough to remind you that you probably shouldn't want to be there or be in there at all so but yeah Definitely. i got i got dumped out which was uh i was just gonna ask if you fell out yes did you smack your crivets on a rock <laughs> no uh, <laughs> one of the uh so th there's three of us in a raft and um and actually, it's funny you say that because so there's two in front paddling and one in back steering, and is that is there like a tour guide in each boat? Or? No, okay. um, so three in a boat just because three. because we were uh, air quote experienced air ah. quote, and uh, so we we did not have a, uh, a a guide with us, but there's a guide in a boat in front of you and a guide in a boat behind you. So if you get really stuck, but um, yeah, in you, you don't get white foamy rapids uh if you don't have rocks under them to you know push the water around so right. yeah there's plenty of rocks and um and the water was low which means um it's actually uh a lot of those rocks are now on the surface and well, you have to when you say low are you talking like a foot or in you some know places, it, it depends or? it depends where in the river you are um but they uh they they have a gauge on the bridge and depending on where it is at that bridge, they determine whether it's it's high or low. But uh, the guides all know the river backwards and forwards anyway. So, uh, but um, the guy steering our boat did uh, he did a good job of getting the front of the boat 
past one of these rocks. Not so good getting the back of the boat around it. So <laughs> the the back of the raft hits this rock, and he goes, bloop, and is just now sitting on this table-sized rock. And we're about, you know, 25 yards up the river by the time we even figure out that nobody's in the back of the boat. <laughs> so... <laughs> So we kind of look back, and there's no, you know, there, there's no reverse. <laughs> no, there's not. <laughs> and um, so the next boat with the guide in it uh, comes up and, and picks him up, and now we had to do a, a boat-to-boat transfer <laughs> later on, but it, it was fairly hair-raising there for a, for a bit. So it turned into a search and rescue. So, sort of, yeah. But uh, but at least he, he had some help. When I went out, it was, um, I don't know, I... I've gone over it several times, you know, as far as like what I did wrong and, and I'm not smart enough to know exactly what I did wrong other than I assume it was my hubris and I got cocky and I wasn't sitting as low in the boat as I should have been and all it took was one bump and I went floop. But floop. it's kind of interesting to watch your I I watch my feet go in the air and my uh <laughs> Are you making a floop noise? <laughs> <laughs> there you flooped. That was pretty much me. Yeah. And uh um so <laughs> No, I only went once. <laughs> oh, okay. That was you getting back in the boat. But it, yeah. <laughs> That's about how quick it was when it when it did finally happen. Yeah. So Can uh, I just tell you that was that was brilliant because on this 1981 sound effects machine I have in the board here that sound is actually called floop. Oh, well, perfect. <laughs> so that's why you got the floop. We get a floop. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, yeah, so I, I did make it back into the boat and um, a little hair raising but uh, and a little cold. But, you know, the life preserver did its job and, um, and my local gym did its job because I had the upper body strength to pull myself back into the boat, which... So I you shouldn't know, go good. river rafting then? <laughs> Not quite yet, j Dog. Well, maybe. <laughs> does he sink or does he you... float? <laughs> Depends what I ate. <laughs> so, but but yeah, it's a good time. And um, the other amusing thing to me about the whole trip is that, uh, so there's a bunch of us guys having a guys weekend in the guys cabin. And right next to us is a bunch of women having a women's weekend in the women's cabin. Oh. Um, and, uh, all roller they, derby girls, probably. Yeah, <laughs> they're uh, they're a hoot. It's that whole um, insight into you know, and, and they just basically talk as if none of us guys were there, right? And so you really get some insight into into what's going on, and um, it just cracks me up. And uh, I think, um, and and the nice thing about you know Silver Cliff is that you have all this time. You know, you can get into a really in-depth conversation about neck tattoos, right. you know, and pros and cons, you know. Where you, you got nowhere to go. Right, right. So you might as well talk about it. And uh, the other one, the other insight that I got, um, that, you know, guys' locker rooms are, have a lot of, you know, information in them. But there are things. And that, naked men. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just stating is the it, obvious. Is that a draw? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh but like for instance, I, I never would have figured out on my own that um, that a caffeine high makes it very difficult to draw on your eyebrows. <laughs> I had no idea. You can't say I ever see thought of that before. Exactly. I, I now on your own eyebrows. Yes. Oh yeah. Or I I assume that if you've got caffeine jitters, you'd have trouble drawing on any eyebrows. But or if you had the crevices. <laughs> Kermit gives you a shaky hand. <laughs> I guess that's better than an apple stain, but I don't. I couldn't. <laughs> couldn't tell you that for sure. I'll bet you. I'll bet you if you apple open up stain. Prince's vault, there's a song <laughs> called Ethel Stain in there somewhere. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure everybody that lives there is perfectly nice, but I'm so sorry. <laughs> And hopefully he was the only one with the combination because we don't need to hear that song. <laughs> so it sounds like you had a great time. Yeah, I did. I had a good time. I was sad to, sad to leave, but happy to come home. You know, one of those. Exactly. So, made the uh, the yearly pilgrimage to uh, Cops Custard. Cops Custard. Oh, yeah, I've been there. In, uh, Not in a while. In Milwaukee. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
So this isn't up in that little area. No, it's, it's on the way. It's on the way home. It's like frozen custard. So, yes, like a Culver's. Yes, but kind of. I would say less, uh, less commercialized. Right. It's much more obviously uh, specialized <laughs> and, and everything. So, yeah, and um, fresh ingredients on everything. If you order a you know a banana shake, you will watch them peel bananas and throw it in your shake. Oh, uh, which is kind of kind of cool. So they don't come out of the back of the kitchen shaking bananas around. No, and yeah, or squirting squirt, squirt, heavy beat music. <laughs> <laughs> squirting juice out of a machine into a <laughs> cup of, you know, custard. So. Now, do they peel the banana like a human or a monkey? You know, I I really didn't pay that much attention. I was too busy watching them make my burger. Because you had too much caffeine. Probably. You're too busy drawing was... on your eyebrows. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Sir, did you say banana shake? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> What's he doing to himself? <laughs> so were you were you painting on like the uh well not me. The goth eyebrows or yeah. what? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I don't I don't know. It was just a general statement. I didn't <laughs> just wondering where I, the drawing on your own eyebrows comes in on the on the guy's strip. No well not the not the, the guys were discussing not it. Not that I don't do it all the time. The girls just... were discussing it. But that's the oh. kind of thing that yes. Okay. I uh you know, it doesn't make its way into the guy's cabin, oh. so you gotta kind of sneak around. But actually, that's part of the reason why I, I played the, um, or why I was looking for stalker songs in the first place. Uh, and I did play um, when I come around, uh, sitting on the, the picnic bench in lovely sixty-five degree weather, which again is is unusual for up there. But um, because so this picnic bench is right in between the guy's cabin and the girl's cabin, and as I'm noodling around i look over and um the girl's cabin which is about eight feet away from me has uh one of the girls looking through binoculars in my direction and rightfully so yes and there i was being stalked from eight feet away how and, often uh, do you see a wild levis yeah. <laughs> running around the northern woods of wisconsin with his guitar with his guitar yes. in his so. in his home element <laughs> singing creepy stalking so, songs yes and of course i yeah i i didn't have um What's the sting one? The, uh, the every, every breath, breath you take. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't have that one in the repertoire, but um, I wish I did. Kind of creepy when you read those lyrics too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, not not Trojan horse in my pocket, crazy, but <laughs> used. <laughs> not gonna get over that. It's a genius. Who thinks of that? Prince thinks of that. Prince thinks of that. Yeah, he's like, I, I need to make this rhyme. How am I gonna work these lyrics? Okay, yeah, some of these Trojans have to be used. So I'm guessing that everybody listening to the show is probably saying, of course that's what he said. Right. <laughs> but I'm I'm hoping I'm not the only one that missed that. Didn't I, we, think, I, I mean, when I was younger, I was probably, well, he was 57, 43, 14 years older than me, so when he was mm-hmm. in his prime in 25, I was probably 10. Right, right. So I wasn't necessarily thinking about Trojans yet. No, I uh, I didn't catch any of that. Uh, so that just kind of went years. over my head. So, mm-hmm. little red Corvette. That's all I, I heard today. That's that, the fun part. That uh, raspberry beret also has a alternate meaning. It does. So I, I wasn't aware of that uh, either until today. Before the show here, we looked at those Thank lyrics. You, Facebook and uh, Facebook eluded to the fact that it could mean alternate sex. Yes, uh, that's. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> and as we read through the lyrics, it definitely could mean alternate <laughs> sex Raz Barry Beret so know, Prince Prince was a very sexual still human a being still esoteric for me I, I'm not getting it but. all five foot two of them <laughs> right. very sexual human being and one of the funny stories I saw as I was looking on YouTube at some of the current videos Jimmy Fallon had a story and I'm not a huge Jimmy Fallon fan okay but every once in a while he's got something funny out there and he told a story where he was at an after-party show, and it might have been an, the SNL after-party show or something. I don't remember what the party was. But he was in the audience, and one of Prince's publicists, while he was playing up on the stage at this private party, came to Jimmy and said, Prince wants you to come up and dance with him. <laughs> and Jimmy Fallon turned it down and said, no, he's doing a great show. I'm enjoying the show. I don't want to go up there. I don't even dance. Right. And then another publicist came in the next song and said, Prince wants you to come up and dance with him. So Jimmy Fallon says, fine, I'll <clears> go up there. I'll dance with him. So he goes up there and he starts dancing and Prince backs away from him ever so slightly as he's dancing, 
puts the guitar down and walks off stage with the band keeps playing and Jimmy's just standing there dancing by himself and Prince <laughs> never came back on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently that's the kind of guy he was. Loved pranks. Loved I goofing see. around. So, yeah, that's that's sad. That's sad. Of course, we don't appreciate them as much while they're here, but you start hearing all the stories come out and it sounded like he was a fun, fun dude. Mm-hmm. But now that I have the Trojan thing, uh, I'm thinking that's a song we're going to have to work up a cover for. Probably. Uh, because it's it's right up there <laughs> with gin say, and juice. We're, we're gonna have to drop it down about nine octaves. Oh, but, yeah, that too. You know, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a lovely <laughs> acoustic version out there somewhere. Somebody must have done it. But yeah, I I would lean towards uh, Little Red Corvette as the most likely song to to be uh, covered acoustically. Well, there's another one that uh, is very deep in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because uh, you like to party like it's 1999? No, no, but I, before I get into the one that's deep in my heart, I did see a Facebook post, and it was a picture of Prince on the $20 bill. <laughs> did you see that. it? Yes. And it said, <laughs> the bill is actually worth $19.99, <laughs> and underneath says, the bill formerly known as $20. Yes. <laughs> one of the best memes I've seen in a long time. And somebody came up with that one, like, overnight. So... Nice tie in with the Harriet Tubman story. There you go. Which, by the way, to sum that up, I don't care. If it's 20 bucks, it's 20 bucks. Mm-hmm. Just put someone famous on there. <laughs> and can I just say, yes, Benjamin Franklin is not a president, but neither is Alexander Hamilton. He was not a okay. president. And everybody keeps saying we need to keep presidents on the bills. Oh, I see. Well, two of them don't have a president on them. Right. So, right. shut up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everybody thinks that. So, yes, he was, I believe, the first secretary or treasurer. Treasurer, And he yeah, came up with the whole, the whole idea of the bank and, yeah, and I, I working was for government. looking and, at some of that today. And that's what he did. He was actually. not a president. So. Hmm. But that's fine. He has, think about that. He didn't get kicked off, though, because he's got a play on Broadway right now. I heard Hamilton. that, too. Yeah. How do you pull him off the $10 bill and make that news when he's got a star <laughs> play on Broadway that's selling out every show about Alexander Hamilton? So... Sorry, Andrew Jackson. <laughs> Gotta go. You're out. But he's not out. He's going to be on the back of the bill. Well, then what's he complaining about? It's, it's not like he's, you know, he's I, just, he's I just moving. Hard, I have a hard time believing that uh, Jackson really cares. So. Yeah, I don't think he's turning over. No, not over you know, that. He said he's, everybody gets 15 minutes of fame. He's had 100 years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a lot more than most people get. Mm-hmm. So. But he's still going to be on the back. Yes. So he's still going to be back there waving. Maybe somebody's still worried that he's, in. yeah, that is, he's in decline. <laughs> you start on the front, you end up on the back, then where do you go? Yep. Well, then you, then you go back down to the 10, I what, guess. What's the next step? Just keep working your way down the, uh, yeah, the, the free agency pool. Down there in the back of the old mushroom head one. <laughs> <laughs> old mushroom head. <laughs> so, yeah, and they're going to get rid of the penny, too. Well, it's about time. They've been talking about that for a long time. I, you know, I don't have any love for it, the penny. Now, officially, for the last 10 years, I think they said it costs more to make a penny than yeah, a penny's worth. absolutely. Yep. So, let's get rid of that one. Yeah, I'm okay with that. All those, uh, you can watch videos online of people that take $100 in pennies and dump it on the street, and mm-hmm. nobody picks it up. It's $100. Right. It's all yours. Right. And people just look at it and keep on walking. Yep. <laughs> I would probably try. Because <laughs> I always wear... You're out there with a Ziploc baggie. Well, I'm always wearing cargo pants. Oh, well, there I, you go. I do wear jeans, but most of the time I have cargo pants on. Uh, being a techie kind of guy. Mm-hmm. I've always got stuff in my pockets. You know? <laughs> and my kids take advantage of it, too, because I'll be walking in the store, and I reach down in one of the side pockets of my cargo pants, and there's an iPod in it. And I have no idea how I got there. <laughs> they just use my pockets. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. No idea, huh? With the cargo pants, I'd fill them up as much as I could. I mean... <laughs> Could get you a five taco special. <laughs> it's all said and done. What is that? Four dollars and thirty five cents, or <laughs> something like that. So, <laughs> the taco special, formerly known as five, <laughs> now known as four thirty eight. <laughs> you know what's funny too? Uh, not a lot of people know, and I'm not going to promote it a lot on this show. But uh, being a computer tech, mm-hmm. I do some some side work. I got customers, and I help them out. And I had a customer. It's very t- charitable of you. Well, not charitable because I make them pay. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I did have Shoot. a customer today for the first time in the many years I've been doing this, gave me a form of payment that I've never received. Oh, yeah? Checks, cash, 
Uh, even take you know credit cards now with those PayPal swipes or the, the Square online. Did you get a two dollar bill? I did not get a two dollar <sighs> bill. Okay, that would have been kind of cool. That, that's my guess. That was my guess. And then I probably would have said, "Why don't you just keep this? You don't have to give me this." I would have been that mm-hmm. nice. But this one I took. Um, customer owed me fifty dollars. Okay, they only had forty bucks, two twenties. And she said, "Well, I'm a little bit short." And she goes, "Wait, hold on." And I'm standing there, and you got my laptop in my hand. I'm ready to leave the house. She goes over by her purse. She comes back and hands me a ten dollar winning lottery card. <laughs> <laughs> and she says this is 10 bucks what do we... <laughs> I, I can't say no I'm like and i looked at it and sure enough there it is it's the, it was that uh 2500 a week for life card is it the was is it an illinois yeah. lottery card because you it, know that may not have a whole lot of well true backing <laughs> you might only get 750 <laughs> exactly because <laughs> you gotta pay 250 in tax <laughs> but i took it and uh believe it or not that card Paid for two thirds of your bottle of Evans William whiskey tonight. Leave us. Hey, all right. <laughs> Thank you, loyal customer of J Dog. I appreciate it. I brought it in and I scanned it at the liquor store. I scanned it under the little <laughs> card to see if I if I won, and it said invalid card. And I asked the guy, I'm like, so if it says invalid card, is it bad? He goes, let me see it. And he puts it in his machine, and I hear this little ding, 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 ding. He's like, hey man, you got ten bucks. I'm like, yes, I did. I said, just set it on the counter. I'm going to get a bottle so, of whiskey. Yeah, I was going to say, so tell me this classy story again about how you, how you walked away from a woman after taking her lottery ticket and you went straight to the liquor store. That's- exactly. Somebody that couldn't afford the extra $10, scan the ticket. Winner! <laughs> and then bought whiskey. Oh, my gosh. Genius. Now, it probably would have been the full circle if I would have taken that whiskey back to her apartment and just got drunk with her. (laughs) I'm going to say that that's pretty highbrow. It's almost as if you painted them on yourself. (laughs) Which before I leave tonight, I really want you to draw some eyebrows on me. (laughs) Maybe you can draw them like that St. Patrick's Day shirt I had on. I think I'll draw them like like Wario or something. (laughs) Wario? You know who Wario is? He is in Mario Kart. Yes, exactly. He's he's the best. Wario. Yes. The big bushy eyebrows. Uh Uh-huh. Hey, speaking of uh, um, payment, we've never received. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna shift this slightly and, and kind of go back to my uh, my crazy guys weekend. Okay. So uh, one of the other traditions, yes, we if the if the the weather is amiable, we will go on the river, you know, um, and and do the river thing. But really, that's only uh, about two and a half hours out of a three day weekend. Okay, so. Um, the other part of it uh, for me and Studio Marty is that we get to, uh, since we usually have the bar to ourselves on Thursday and possibly Friday night, um, then we just bring our guitars and we we don't ask. We just start playing. And um, we have yet to get kicked out, you know. So uh, so that, that's part of our tradition is so we just show up with guitars. Three, four years without getting kicked out? Yeah. That's yeah, a, it's a good kind track of a, record. Kind of a thing. So um, <clears throat> this was... Uh, this was the first year I sang a song for the bartender, which I think kind of helped. Nice. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm working on that. You know, but, uh, but anyway, so I did my little acoustic guitar thing, which if you've been listening to the show, you, you kind of get what it is. And, um, <clears throat> and there's some uh, white-haired local sitting at the bar. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, I was, I was going to wrap up. And uh, I said, you know, thanks for listening and thanks for letting us do this thing. And he turns around and he goes... He goes, ah, you can't be done yet. you got to have at least a couple more. <laughs> I'm like, well, okay. You know, so I, I played another song or two, and I, I don't remember what they were offhand. But um, and then I, I played those, and I finished up. And uh, and afterwards, I'm I'm packing up my guitar, and this guy comes up and shakes my hand. Not terribly uncommon. Right. Um, but he looks me in the eye, and he says, I haven't heard anything that entertaining since Dylan in 71. <laughs> well then. Exactly. I'm like... <laughs> now keep in mind, he lives in Crevitz. <laughs> Crevitz. Not, oh. not, not Crevitz. Well, that's, that's the a... disease. Crevitz is the town. Crevitz is the disease. So, so. but uh, yeah, I'm like, well, shoot. I've never been uh, favorably um, compared to, to Dylan. That's and certainly, very nice. Yeah, that's what I thought. You know, or 
I don't know. Maybe he needs to get out more than you know <laughs> once every yeah, maybe you're forty-five missing the years. Here. But I don't know. No, I took it as a compliment, and uh, yeah, that's kind of exciting. So, well, and I didn't even play any Dylan that evening. So and he he called me Dylan the rest of the weekend. So <laughs> I'll run with it. I'll run with it. Well, I can I can attest to that because when you finish playing your song tonight, when I come around. I haven't been that entertained <laughs> since episode 10. <laughs> <laughs> when I believe you played some Bieber. <laughs> yes. So I went two weeks without being that entertained. <laughs> this guy. Wow. 71. 71. Yes. And he you was, weren't even here. No, that's true. That's, well, you that's were kind of here. No, not, not much. There was not much Olivas in 71. You're older than me. Yes, but not. Oh, enough. but not that. Okay, not that much. Not that much. Okay. Yep. Yeah, let's just point out you're older than me. <laughs> Lee is the senior. But there, there still wasn't a. Uh, yeah, uh, there, there might have been some. Uh, there might have been a bouquet of flowers of me in '71, but not a whole lot more than that. So. <laughs> oh, well, that's that's very very interesting. Yeah. Bob Dylan comparison. So, so there you go. That's my that's my horn tooting for for the rest of the year. Well, that's very nice. So, I don't think I've ever gotten a compliment like that. Yeah. Uh, one of my most memorable comments, I think, in the middle of a show was when I said, does anybody have a request? And somebody yelled out, thank you and good night. <laughs> and I actually thought for a second, what the? Oh, <laughs> oh, you son of a biscuit. <laughs> no, you know what? You my, got me. Oh, no, 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 J-Dog. Um, you had a rabid fan. At one of your shows, I believe it was in Green Bay, and uh, it was an outdoor show that I happened to be at, and I, I witnessed it. Uh, there was a fan, a four-legged fan, that came up oh. <laughs> during your set. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, this and was, showed his appreciation. This was before Levis was in the band, but he was... Very much a friend of the band. Him I, and Asian Matt were both there. Yes, we got to be sound men. And it was it was in a backyard at a large party. There was a lot of people there. There was like four or five bonfires going on, and mm-hmm. we played up on the patio. And we are all set up there. And I believe Levis and Asian, Asian Matt were all snuggled up in a blanket together. I was just going to say, very chilly I, re- I remember that because I, yeah, I got to sleep with Asian Matt. <laughs> on the floor of the bus. That's right. One air mattress, two men. <laughs> And and I slept on the couch right above him, so I had a, a top row seat to the whole show. So yeah, they're sitting there all snuggled up. We're playing. My fingers are dying. It's like forty six degrees, and right in the middle of a song, right in the middle of a song, this dog, I think it was like a huskyish kind of dog. I don't even remember. Comes up about ten feet in front of me, and he's just staring at me. <laughs> Just staring right, and I, and it was kind of weird because I'm like, well, it's just a dog. I just ignored it. It's probably the guy's dog that lives here or whatever. And and he just kept staring. Then all of a sudden, his hind end goes down, <laughs> and never lost eye contact with me <laughs> as he shat in front of our show. Everybody notices what's going on. We didn't break the song. We kept going. But then once the song was done... That's because you're a professional, J-Dog. I think Rufus yells out, Well, we know where we stand in Green Bay. (laughs) That dog, until he pinched the last of that loaf, did not... He locked his eyes on it, did not lose eye contact with me. And, And I've heard before that dogs will do that because they feel they're most vulnerable. Uh. As they're going to the bathroom, so if anyone's around, they will look. But he had so- he connected with me, and I don't know if that was appreciation or this is what I think of your show. I think he was. What a moment! I think he was trying to beat your record. It was a very solid stool. I mean, if it was solid or runny, it could mean two different things. But it was, it was perfectly solid. And he just kind of walked away, gave that that right hind leg kick with the grass up in the air, and. And went on with this evening. I, I just remember the uh, yeah the stage lighting, you know, <laughs> backlighting this dog. Perfect silhouette. Oh, it was it's fantastic. It was beautiful. And we didn't even have to say anything. Everybody just kind of knew what was going on. Yeah. yeah. And I think the owner knew because maybe the dog always does that. <laughs> I'm going to find somebody, lock, lock love eyes with them, and then let, let it go. <laughs> and I, maybe it's it was just the moment, but it was not a fast moment. 
No. It, I remember I mean, it was like a verse and a half or something. It took this dog quite a while. Right. <laughs> I mean, I remember going on for a good minute of why is this dog just keep staring at me? <laughs> and for me, it seemed like a half hour because I I, I felt uh, like everyone was looking at it, but then, yeah, well, we know why. <laughs> for the J-Dog. Oh, this is for you, J-Dog. Gosh. See, normally when, uh, when J-Dog has these stories like this I, I hear about them secondhand but it was really nice to be at this one he was there and actually for the yeah, delivery witness the carnage <laughs> oh dogs topic of dogs there's a uh, there's another show that I promoted here before Game of Thrones yes oh but I can only go through season three because that's when I gave up on that piece of crap I see oh daredevil and all these people now are telling me, oh, you got to give it a chance. I gave it three seasons. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you mean a chance? I mean, I heard now that we're on, we're on season six. I don't know. I'm, and and I'm, winter is still coming? I'm, I'm back in season four myself. Winter's so. still coming. When's winter going to get I here? I, We've had like seven mm. winters in South Elgin and <laughs> Genoa and all that stuff. And they haven't even had winter yet. So, mm. eh, anyways. But, uh... No, the other show I was talking about mm. was the Black Dog Radio Show. Gotcha. Which is also on Spreaker. Yes. Which yes. you can uh, search for on Spreaker, the Black Dog Radio Show. You can also search for them on iTunes. Okay. They've been doing a lot of promoting of our show over there. They're way too kind. And they've uh, they started listening to the show. The, the host, Richard Aw, says he loves the show. Mm. And he, he just promotes a lot. So I want to give the favor back because I listen to them every Friday night. They oh, do good. a live broadcast every Friday at 8 o'clock Central. Live. Live show. That's that's crazy talk. That is crazy talk. <laughs> and they've got it down pat. Um, they do have, you know, every once in a while you have a little goof up, but that's what happens in live. Sure. And they cover it very well and they just move on. They're very professional about so, it. So if we pre-record, why do we still have goof ups? Well, because we suck. Oh. <laughs> The show is terrible. <laughs> oh, right. Yes, this show is terrible. I keep forgetting. I tell you before we start, let's have a terrible show. <laughs> right? And then we do the high five thing and the little handshake. I mean, oh. But yeah, definitely want to promote them. Please listen to their show. Now, we are not necessarily a children's show. They are absolutely not a children's oh, show. Oh, okay. So right. you're going to find a few F-bombs dropped here and there, but they're well-placed. I see. I'll give them that. So it's give them not just the constant... Uh, Machine gun of f bombs. Correct. Yeah, like like we started out with here. I see. And then realized it wasn't you know in all good taste. Um. So yeah, give them a listen. Friday nights, eight o'clock. Find them on Spreaker or iTunes. The Black Dog Radio Show. One of the listeners of the Black Dog Radio Show, mm -hmm. because of their promotion, came over and followed our show, oh. and uh, actually really? gave us gave us a comment. Okay. And he's from Fort Wayne, Indiana. His name is Russ. Hi, Russ. What's, <laughs> what's up, Russ? Glad to hear you're hanging out with us tonight. So let me read you this comment that Russ left. He left it on the uh, podcast number 10, which was the Roller Derby Girl show. Mm. And his comment is, those rollerblade babes sound hot. Wait, rollerblade? Wait, I said rollerblade babes. <laughs> oh, I was going to say. Not rollerblade. Those, those fighting words. Those roller babes sound hot. Do you have a web page with pictures? Hi, ladies. My name is Russ. You can contact me here on Spreaker. I love roller derby. I watched it with my aunt. Booby Trap, are you listening? <laughs> you guys got yourself a stalker. Oh, Nitro. Thank you, Russ. Yes. But yes, there are pictures. You can actually find them on the Facebook page of J-Dog and Levis. Oh, good. And we always post pictures on there. And you'll see most of the guests you know, yes. on there in different varieties. Forms. And forms. So mm -hmm. thank you very much for listening, Russ. I appreciate it. And drop in the comment there. Yep. There's there's probably some roller derby out in your uh, neck of the woods there, Russ, too. So I don't know any Indiana teams offhand, but I bet there are some. I would guess. Because uh, roller derby seems to find lesser areas and try to promote there. Because Rockford doesn't really have any professional sports, oh. but they have the Rockford Rage. Yes. So they actually have a pretty good following. Yes. So it's kind of like a college town. Like yeah. When you have... When you get to Nebraska, you get to Oklahoma. And yeah. They don't have a lot of professional sports. They uh -huh. cling to the colleges. Which is probably why the New York roller derby team sucks so badly. Well, that's a whole different story. I think they've only won like 45 years running or something like that. Well, because they're playing teams from Crivets. <laughs> <laughs> if they'd actually let the Rockford Rage come and play a sanctioned game, boy, maybe, yeah, maybe they would win 41 games yeah. a year. 
instead of 42 or 3. Yeah, I don't think they could handle the rage. I don't think they could. Mm -mm. I don't think they could. The rage did give the uh, Mississippi Valley mayhem all they could handle. Yes. I yeah. think they underestimated them. Yes. That was that was a lot of fun to watch. So that was a lot of fun to watch them play against a team that was uh, higher ranked mm -hmm. and just give it to them. I, I yep. don't think they expected it, but they, it was a really good game. I enjoyed it very much. Yep. Um, so Rockford I, Rage. I am, um, you know, true confessions. I am. I'm becoming surprisingly emotional about roller derby. <laughs> When I first started watching roller derby, it was kind of like, oh, okay, you know, for, you don't have any clue what's going on. You know, it's just a bunch of helmets clanking into each other, you know, right. and girls ending up, you know, on their knee pads and sliding across the floor, you know, so you're kind of just sitting around waiting for that, you know, right. but uh, I, w I would say the evolution has been kind of like it has been for football for me in that, um, yes, it just starts out as mass confusion, but, and and you're kind of waiting for the highlights, but then later you you start to realize more of the uh, the nuances of the game and the strategies that are taking place. And uh, in roller derby, your offense and defense simultaneously, and and trying to decide when to make that change, you know, or when you make the the focus, right? When you shift the focus from from one to the other, you know, and who decides all that and all that. It, it's it's really interesting, and uh, there's a there's a lot more strategy going on in there than I ori originally gave him credit for. But Well, it gets a bad rap because a lot of people think, you know, it's it's a show like wrestling. I think we've yeah. gone over that before. Right. Nobody realizes there's a professional sport behind it. Right. And there truly is. And once you understand the sport, it's like any other sport. Mm -hmm. When you understand all the rules, now you can see the competition. Right, right. And, uh, um, you know, Mississippi Valley was real good about... Um, I don't know how to say it politely other than, um, you know, if, if the ref isn't looking, then it doesn't happen. Right. You know, and, and it's legal, you know, but those of us in the audience that are, that are looking, you know, are right. like, Hey, what the crap? You know, so. Right. Well, one girl did get ejected. Uh, I think it was bruising Betty. Two of them did. Oh, I didn't notice the second one, but yeah. I saw bruising Betty was out of her pads, out of her helmet. Yeah. And when you have too many fouls, apparently they yes. kick you out. Just that's like right. basketball. Yep. Uh, that's and and getting her that extra foul was a strategic decision. So right. And I would imagine if you get to that point where you have, let's say, it's five fouls. I don't know the number. Yeah. But if you have four, and there's that one jammer that's killing you, <laughs> and you're the coach, hey, mm -hmm. bouncing Betty, you're going to be done in just a minute because I really want you to throw an elbow into that jammer's <laughs> throat. <laughs> Since you already got four, right. you're going to have an early night. So I could see that happening too. I. Uh, yeah, my my understanding is is that the situation was actually the opposite, where it was go on and make her mad. She's already got four fouls. Oh, okay. so it was, so it was you know, a trying to rage induced, trying to draw that last last foul and see if they take the bait. Yeah. So, and see if a ref is watching when they do. You know, that's the other thing. Exactly. But, well, kind of okay. like uh, like you're over there winking at me, so I'm taking the bait from you. <laughs> yes. That we're approaching an hour already, <laughs> an hour of nonsensical talk. <laughs> Between J Dog and Levis. We all know what that means. Oh. <laughs> I kind of like what I said in the last show. The, and it just came right off the top of my head. The 10 string gilly. Or no, the 6 string gilly. 10 fingers on the 6 string gilly. <laughs> I don't even know why I said that. I don't, but I did. I don't and remember I like you it. saying that. But okay. I think I'm going to use uh, 6 string gilly for yeah. in the future here. So that's a cute little, uh, it's a cute little thing. It's cute. Mm -hmm. I, I never would have thought of it. Sounds like an album. Sounds Cute's like a good. country album. Six String Gilly from Balabamba. Well, one thing I would like to point out tonight is that we did promote for this show, podcast number 12. Uh, Chris Wicks was going to be with us tonight to do his segment, The Short Fuse. Now, there's a possibility with the magic of podcasts and the magic of editing and post-production ah. that he could wind up being in there later this week, and I can definitely add that audio later. He had a family emergency tonight. I hope everything's okay. Chris, our thoughts are with you. But if you still want to do that segment, I will add it on to the end of the show. And you can rant and rave all you want. And you'll have the mic all to yourself. <laughs> and perhaps I can even get a live recording instead of on the phone. There you go. That would make the rant even better. And Wait, he, you mean, so he gets a mic all to himself? He doesn't have to share with you? He will not have to share with me. Why don't I get that? <laughs> Or why do I sing through it every time I do get one? I'll get you a second mic soon. <laughs> and then we can sit on either side of the table here. <laughs> Instead of in my lap the whole show. Not that I mind. 
Well, thanks for tuning in once again here, podcast number 12. A little bit lighthearted tonight. I enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to be drinking a lot more whiskey as soon as we go into post-production. <laughs> so it's involved there of the Evan Williams. Um, so if you want to reach us, as always, you can get us on the email, and that's uh, gmail.com, jdogandleavis at gmail.com. That's our best place of communication if you want to tell Lee what to play, tell us what to talk about, we'll do it. Like I've said before, we're Radio Horse. <laughs> do whatever you want us to do. The show is yours. <laughs> well, what? I guess it's kind of ours, but so it's you, more yours. Did you say Radio Horse or Radio Horse? And if I'm a Radio Horse, am I the one of the used ones? I was just going to say. Yeah. Getting back to that uh, quarter horse. <laughs> when a quarter horse is used up. <laughs> tell you you make glue (laughs) so get us on iTunes you can get us on Spreaker Spreaker Spreaker.com is where we host you can also see us on YouTube now Uh, I I think since since podcast 8 or 9 every time I click on upload it gets put on YouTube now oh okay so you can go there you can look up J-Dog and Leavis and there's a channel there so feel free to listen to however you want to these podcasts are usually put on on Thursday nights. Tonight is Wednesday. It'll be up for your Thursday listening pleasure. We're going to do a live show soon. I keep saying that. <laughs> but boy, is that nerve wracking. I don't know why. We just sat here and talked for an hour. No big deal, right? No big deal. Mm-hmm. Live. But when you go live, I hear that your first live show, Speaker will, Spreaker will promote it, and 100,000 people will be listening. Oh. Only on the first one. So no pressure there. <laughs> they actually promote the show, and they get 100,000 listeners there, so... That should be fun. Uh, Terry, once again, congratulations on winning that T-shirt. Nice Um, job, Terry. Whenever you decide to come back to this country, (laughs) I'll get it to you. Uh, Just got to get your address and everything. You can do that. Reply to the uh, email that I sent you. And thanks for uh, posting comments on our page and stuff, Terry. We appreciate that. Absolutely. On the Facebook page, that's where you can reach us, J-Dog and Leave Us, and that's where we promote most of the upcoming events for our show. As Leave Us once said, old school. Facebook is now old school. Yes. You can get us on Twitter, too, and I keep saying that. <laughs> but we still got two followers. <laughs> Brother-in-law and some Mexican guy with a good-looking face. <laughs> and Maybe uh, we should actually learn what Twitter is. Yeah. I, I, every time we post, it says we, we have a show, but if you're saying you have a show and there's nobody listening, then it doesn't really matter if you have a show. Okay. But, yeah, you can find us in all those places. Please comment on the show. You can comment on the speaker page. You can comment in our email. You can comment on Facebook. Somebody out there, tell Leave us what you want to hear. <laughs> he will play anything. <laughs> Even if you're from Alabama, he'll play you some <laughs> Alabama music. So, thanks again for listening, guys. Hopefully I can get Chris Wicks and his segment in here and add it onto the show a little bit later this week. And we will talk to you soon for podcast number 13. We have no idea what it's going to be about. But that's the glory. Neither do you. We have something in common. (laughs) Good night, everybody. Buenos dias. Francisco reporting for Mexican Word of the Day on the show of Jaime, Dog, and Levi's. Mexican Word of the Day, Detroit. Man, I was in a car accident, and the people say my car is Detroit.